So since the diesel fuel nozzles are bigger, uh, we have to bore out the filler hole. Uh, I'm just going to use a die grinder. So I just threw a rag in there so no metal chips will fly in. Put some grease around there so it'll collect some of the filings. I disconnected the fuel filler hose um, right there. This rubber piece there, disconnected that. So once I'm done, I can just blow shop air in and then it won't go into the fuel tank. So it's all bored out. I believe a diesel fuel pump nozzle is 23 millimeters outside diameter. So I got my 16 mil socket, which measures just under 24 mil. And it fits, so I don't have to bore it any bigger. I just have to get a rag, clean all the metal filings up, and then throw the vacuum in, try to suck as much metal filings as I can, and then shop air, blow the rest down. I welded the EGT gauge bung in, and then I deleted the EGR cooler. Uh, so I made these little block off plates. Um, I had to weld this on quite an angle because the probe is pretty long and it would interfere with this section if I were just to weld it straight. So now, fits pretty good. So, that will go in. And then whatever, tighten that. Um, what else did I do? Chopped off the exhaust today, so once I get the adapter plate, I can put the starter on and then figure out how I want to route the exhaust. Uh, not my proudest work, I guess, but um, I had two coolant ports that I will not be using on this metal tube that goes alongside the block and eventually goes to the thermostat. I just chopped it off, crimped it, and then just welded a, a little bead there so it won't leak, because the only coolant ports I'll be using will be for the heater core, um, which will be this one, these two, and this. I kind of revised the engine bracket a little. I cut this part out because Apparently this will interfere with the starter if it was just a square plate. Also finished up wiring the EGT gauge and the backlighting for the boost gauge. So that's nice. So all I gotta do is drop the motor in and then hook it up to the to the harness here for the EGT gauge. Today's mission will be trying to mount the fuel filter for the TDI into the FJ. I'm thinking of just using this flat bar, making a bracket using these two bolts kind of coming around, and then having a straight piece here, and then just basically hose clamping uh, the filter onto the flat bar. So I'll see what I can come up with. Um, I want to mount the original Volkswagen fan into the FJ, or at least figure out brackets for it. I want to mount my ECU. I want to mount all the vacuum solenoids. Um, I got to finish mounting my fuel pressure regulator. Maybe get to the intercooler piping if I'm feeling it today. But uh, yeah, we're really, really close, really close. So I got the bracket all made up and painted. Bolts onto the two factory holes there. And then I drilled an extra hole down here uh, just for extra support. So fuel filter is just gonna mount like this. 
and then it's going to be secured with hose clamps, two of them. So for the ECU, um, I just modified the factory bracket. The ECU slides into here. I just cut off a couple tabs and then um, I welded this little L bracket on. So what I'm gonna do with this, it's gonna sit right behind my compressor. Um, bolt's gonna go through this hole. Uh, like that. The other bolt's gonna go through another hole here. What's going on there? Like that. I'm gonna throw a nut and washer on the bottom. And then that L bracket sits perfectly down sits perfectly down there. Um, gonna throw another nut and bolt through that hole. And then the ECU will slide into here perfectly. The harness will come up over the compressor into the engine. And then I have a trim piece here that will cover up those bolts like that. So it's gonna look fairly clean, I guess. Got the bracket installed. I had to drill some holes here to clear the, the bolt head. Bolt down there is all tight. ECU will just drop in and it, it should just slide down like that. It'll go down further, but that's, uh, that's the whole idea. It's gonna be pretty, pretty strong. It's gonna clear the hood and everything. So even though it's not seated all the way, it still clears the strut. No problem. I decided to buy this Toyota OEM Hilux diesel um, clutch friction plate because I've seen many people spit out these springs right out of these buckets here um, after they do their swap. Um, that's probably because the original clutch was designed to dampen the forces from a gasoline engine, but with a diesel, there's a lot more torsional forces or vibrations. I also got a new uh, release bearing and OEM flywheel bolts. But my clutch only has 40,000 kilometers on it since I last replaced it. So I will be reusing the flywheel and pressure plate. I don't think there will be any issue with that. Um, I just don't want my original friction plate to explode on me when I'm in the, in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, this is the part number. The great thing about this friction plate is that it's the same diameter thickness same number of splines as the FJ Cruiser's original friction plate so I'll have no problem bolting this up